All right, everybody, we're going to get started here. <clears throat> All right. Jim, there's seats up here if you want to sit up front. All right, we're going to begin, everybody. So today you are privileged to have Elise here. In addition to educating our youths, she is also an awesome resin caster. She casts for the likes of Heinz Pens. Anyone ever heard of them? As well as many others, many others. So uh, Elise is going to kind of share some fun stuff with us. And let's welcome her. Oh, thank you. You're not getting fresh. I know. So when um, Amy and Chad talked to me about doing the demo, I was like, okay, well, what do I do? And so we were tossing around some stuff and um, we talked about how to mix colors with mica to get those in-between colors that you may not see in regular standard mica powders. So generally when I'm pouring resin, I'm thinking about one, I have a good visual of a picture, an image, um, a photograph, something that like really speaks to me, especially nature, because in nature, all the colors seem to go together, right? And it makes it super easy to like plan out your colors. I find it's a lot harder when I'm just looking at colors going, okay, what do I want to put together? So um, I have some basic ideas about color theory that I took a watercolor class at the community college and really delved into how to mix colors and you know the basic color wheel stuff that you learn in elementary art. So what I do is I use that as a frame of reference if I'm looking for do I want a brighter color, a darker color, does it need to be a little bit more on the green side, does it need to be a little bit more on the purple side, how do I get those in between colors and just knowing the complementary colors, what goes together, so that way you can balance out and get the right shade. So I was thinking about, as I was doing this today, I've got three photos that I just found on Pinterest and just really looked at them and went, wow, those colors just go really well together. They're in between colors, so you're not going to come in and find um, some of the really light blues and then it's knowing how the micas work together to be able to get you do you want shimmer do you want sparkle do you want a more of a flat look do you want like a dark bold color or do you really want just a hint of color so all of those factor in when you're doing the resin you look at the colors you look at your mica powders and you're like okay i think this is going to work the more you work with the mica powders the more you know how they're going to play together. Um, some of my favorite micas, I love eye candy, P-Town Subby. Um, some of the caster's choice is great. Um, I've kind of shifted more towards the eye candy lately just because of the variety of colors. So if I'm looking for, um, have you seen the Narwhal Year of the Rabbit pen that just got released? No? Um, I just poured resin for their year of the rabbit pen. And that one actually took two different colors of light, um, shimmers of pink and shimmers of light blue. And so I wanted to make sure that the white stood out. I wanted to have enough glitter and um, shimmer, but then I didn't want the pink and the blue to overtake. So it was just a kind of delicate balancing act between all four of the colors and making sure that the ratios and the proportions were right. So for that one, I used two different whites from eye candy. I got the, they have a white sampler set. Like you can get a box of all whites and you go, what in the world? Like 10 whites, really? And so I got out the packet and I'm looking at all the colors going, they're all white. Okay, so you have to like really open them up and like look at the grain size. Is it powdery? Is it shimmery? Is it going to be more translucent? Is it going to be more chalky? Um, those are kind of some of the things I look at when I'm mixing in colors. So on this one, what kind of colors do we see? Like what would you, like what draws your eye to it? Blue and yellow. 
Blue, yellow, turquoise, red. Mm-hmm. Yep. So all of those colors would come together, and what I would do is like maybe pick out four or five that really stood out and work with those. So what I try to do is I balance, I try to balance like two or three darks with two or three lights that would go together and play nice. So I would pull in some of the browns, like I see some browns in here, but browns are really hard because browns will take over. So I mix it with white to tone it down. I might mix it with a little bit of yellow to bring out some of the more gold and honey kinds of aspects of the brown. The turquoise, I would also lighten that a lot with the white, just so that way it pops out. It gets it more brightness. Can we ask questions now? Yeah, for sure. Does that mean when you're mixing the turquoise, you add the white to it? Or does that mean when you're pouring it, you pour some of the whatever it is, some of the white? You can do it both ways. So what I found is, so we've got some turquoise. What I found is I like to start, if I'm doing anything with white, I start with white instead of starting with the turquoise. If you start with white, it's easier to darken, but it's really hard to lighten. So you start with the white. Um, This is an eye candy white. So all I do is just grab some white. Nope. Nope, it's just, and I've even done some mixes where I've had some eye candy, some P-Town, some casters, just however they mix together. And you just kind of stir. And if you have a big open window with lots of light coming in, it makes the air just so pretty. You get like all these like sparkles, you know? We have a great big window in our house and the light just shines down. And Jim will be walking by like, what are you mixing? And you know? Okay, so here's, so it started out with that dark turquoise. With the white, we got a really light blue. So there's that. If I wanted to give it a hint of a green, I would put in some emerald and just a little bit at a time just to get it to a different shade. In here, I want to keep it more of the white. So is it easier to put in the powder first? Yes, because, yeah, I would always do the dry mix first just because once you mix your part A and part B together and you've earned that time crunch, it's really hard to go in and like micro adjust the color. Um, now, that being said, if I'm using the Divine Island pigments, those I will adjust in the resin because it's really hard to mix the pigments together to get the right hue and because they're so concentrated. Wow, that might help us just a little bit. Put it right where some of us need to see it. Yeah. There we go. There we go. So, um, the other thing I like to do is if I'm looking for a particular shade, I will test it just on my finger and put it on paper towel. And then that way you get a, you can get a glimpse of what that blue is really gonna do once it hits the resin. So, Question. yes. You are doing that. Mm-hmm. I don't do that because I always do the part A, part B. Mm-hmm. So what I end up doing is I end up, I go to the Dollar Tree and they give those little teeny tiny containers. Mm -hmm. So I'll mix up a whole bunch of powder and then just like out of here, I'll just and dump it in once I get my resins all set up. 
Um, and then, then you have fun with names too because I will end up with, like, I did one in my tan and I wanted a specific sort of my silver. And then I was doing the year of the tiger for narwhal. And it was like narwhal light orange, you know, narwhal medium orange, you know, and or the sea foam because I did a marrow mermaid for Heinz and I needed a sea foam color, which you can't really find sea foam. And so I mixed up sea foam and uh, sea foam, you know, marrow sea foam or, you know. Um, but yeah, so this one, that one I like. Um, for the blue, the dark, dark blue, I would go with more of a cobalt. With the cobalt, if you use the Divine Island Abyss Blue, just a drop of it enhances this blue and it gets to be this beautiful, like deep, deep, deep blue. So you can mix the pigments with the micas. The, you get the sparkliness from mica, but the deepness and the richness of the pigment, if that makes sense. So um, I use a lot of the pigments when I'm doing oranges because a lot of the oranges will be either like, like in your face orange and you need to tone it down a little bit. So you add just a drop of brown and it darkens it just enough to give it that depth. And, and it, or if you put just a drop of white, it gives it this like pinky salmon color when you start mixing it. It's really interesting to see how the pigments work with each other to get you just different hues and different shades. Um, let's see. Yeah, so that was the blue for that guy. Um, I don't see any browns. So we'll go to the next friend. So in this one, I found just anything artwork based where it, it kind of shimmers in between. Um, that would layer really nice if you were doing uh, the vertical molds. So you would have your different shades of colors, just layer them, and then you could swirl them with a stick, or you could just leave them layered and just repeat the layering, and then you get that wavy kind of effect that goes through. White, cast your choice that's in there. So this one is, is more chalky. The Caster's Choice White is more mica-ish, if that makes sense. Um, but it gives like a really nice hint to it. And then in here, let's see. I think I'm also gonna throw in some yellow. So I helped design the macaw pen from the Chicago Pen Company. That one had a very specific orange for the Camelot macaw. So I, that was my first foray into like really mixing oranges to get the right kind of shade. Yay, thank you. So the white pearl, and you can kind of tell the difference on these. So the white pearl, you can see the sparkliness, and this is more like a chalk kind of texture. So that's kind of what I'm looking for as far as the pearl look to it. And you can always get the sparkle, the macro powder, and just add tons of sparkle to it also. It's just plain sparkle. And it gives it this really like glittery effect. Now, Divine Island has amazing glitters. It's called Sparkle. And they have colors to match their pigments that are just amazing. Let's see. What are we going to do with this one? And some yellow. I'm gonna do some blaze. So 
So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for like this in-between um, orange shade that has some true orange. It's got some more of a red orange in the saffron and then pulling in some of the yellow to kind of mix them all together. I just, it, it doesn't matter once you start mixing it, and it doesn't really transfer um, with the others. So you don't worry about contaminating No, the only thing I wouldn't do is do the blue with the oranges. Yes. So if I notice that I'm getting really low, yeah. then I recreate and then I match on the paper towel to make sure that I'm like really super close instead of running out and I'm like, how did I do that? Now I have had to like recreate and then I'm like, okay, what did that look like? And then I can generally get like really close. Um, but yeah, I always try to keep an eye on how much do I have available to be able to match it later on. And then whatever I have left, I just dump in the new, stir it up and, and keep going, so. So with that pearly, you kind of see where it lightened it enough. It gives it a um, salmon-y kind of look to it but then it gives you the, the essence of the glitter as compared to the chalkiness of the blue. So, and then this one, I just, I love this picture. Um, this one, I would probably go full color and add macro to it. What's macro? It's macro pearl. Can you grab me the macro? Sorry. It's in the casting room. <laughs> um, I don't think so. I think I'm good. So I was going to go ahead and pour and use some of the colors. Um, which one do you want to do? Do you want to do the bird? Do you want to do the art? Or I was going to do this one for sure. Um, what do you think? What do you? The art or the bird? You want to do the bird? Okay. Oh, yeah, we can use the, there's that. You know what, we can put some. Is it a bird or is it an owl? It's an owl. It's not Yeah. Are I think so. They're, bird. They're animals with feathers. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so this is the macro pearl. And it's just glitter so it's just glitter which is just awesome is it that color or just sparkle just sparkle is that it, candy? no this is casters yeah this is casters choice um p-town has some i know eye candy also has some um we just released a flower pen from heinz and this was my best friend in that one so any color that i had i just added a whole bunch of macro. So when you just polish and turn, it just it shimmers. It's beautiful. So. And what's the difference between the macro pearl and the macro pearl? Uh, it's the same. Yeah. And then you can also get glitters, like extra fine glitter. Mm -hmm. Depending on the size of the glitter is how much it like will sink, it will float. Um, Eye Candy has the 14 karat gold, which is mixed but Chad was telling me to just dump it in the white and let it settle and then you can just kind of see the gold like I have gold flakes um, we've got a pen coming out in March where I use the 14 karat and it's just beautiful okay I 
no, mine doesn't look like this yet. Yet, operative word. Okay. Ooh, that's the fast, didn't it? Yeah, let's do slow. That's the B, that's the B. Thank you. So we'll do the big one first. Um, let's do let's do the Phoenix first. What do you think? We'll do the Phoenix first. Um, so the resin, I'm going to do 150 of A and 150 of B. We're close to it. And I always try to do just a little bit less of the A than the B. I do, like a gram less. Um, just because if you have, you want them to be the same, but if you have a little bit of one, it's better to have the B. You have to have more of the B than the A. So that's 149. Well, it's the resin. We've had to um, actually like take tools to get the lid off one time. So you mix those in separate cups, little smokes that are mixing them together right off the bat. So what I do is I mix both parts together first and then divide instead of doing like nine million little Oh, you cups. The A's the other part yeah, the A's in here, and then the B's in here. Yeah, yeah there's 149. There we go. Big gloves. And you do it by weight, not by volume. Uh, with Alumalite, you do by weight. Mm -hmm. I haven't used any other resins, so the Illumilite's kind of my go-to. It's how I started and kind of kept going with it. Okay. Does anybody have a... Um, timer? I got, it. got it? Okay. Uh, 12 minutes. Yeah. 12 minutes with the slow. Okay. Now, when I'm doing the larger quantities or I'm doing like a whole bunch of rods, Jim got me one of the uh, mixer attachments for the drill. That is amazing. Although, don't try to use the big one in a small cup, just saying. It, it, it got pretty ugly that day. Everyone in the house was like, because I'm like, Eeps! And they're all like, what happened? I'm like, resin everywhere. Yeah, it was pretty ugly. So you're stirring just enough to make sure that you don't see any streaks or anything, and they're both evenly, evenly combined. With your mixing technique, any different when you're doing a flat one like that or the two? As far as adding the color? Um, adding the color, no. Um, how you pour, yes. Huh? Oh, yeah, the question. Um, is the pouring technique, as far as the color goes, the same for tubes versus flats. So the colors, they end up being the same. 
But in the flats, what happens is you end up, because the resin just does this, then it plays against the sides of the mold. So you get a lot of like overlapping and different swirls that way. In the verticals, um, you're able to get a better layer. You can do more of the ombre where you transition from one color up to the next. Um, and you've got a little bit more control over your swirl. So you can do just a really light swirl. You can do a lot of swirls in the, in the long verticals. This one you can do swirls, but it's not gonna play the way you think it does. So vertical pours, do you pour with a, a, a mixing rod, if you will, in the uh, mold, or do you just pour into the mold and then use your mixing rod? To get I pour into the mold first, and then coat hanger with just a little bit of an L, put it down there and swirl. And then with those, you can also get streaks too, depending on if you want lots of swirls, a little bit of swirls, if you want streaks, that kind of thing. It's just a matter of finding the finding what works, if that makes sense. Do I? <laughs> well, this is the good part, so. Okay, so we're gonna do. And I just eyeball. Um, sometimes I'll be like, oh, you know, we need to measure it out. You don't have time to measure it out. I have found. Okay, so let's do wonderful turquoise. We will do some of the blaze. So if you haven't seen this wisteria color, oh, it's so pretty. Um, let's see. Wisteria, this is that. Let's do some of this one. And we'll do some blue. And just the teeniest of drops of the pigment go a long, long way. Super light orange. Okay. There's the place. The wisteria. Turquoise. So that's her color palette. 
for this one. So because you have, because I mixed them both at the same time, they're all within a few seconds of each other in each cup. So um, especially if, you, if I've got, so if I'm doing like three vertical molds, I'm gonna have three sets of cups. So whichever one I start stirring first is gonna come to temp first. So that's usually the ones that I start with the colors. So I like I line up my colors first and then go from there. And then we're looking for about 95. And you can feel it getting close. It'll feel a lot thicker. So that one's at 85. Well, 95 is your standard store temperature. Mm -hmm. The higher the temperature, the more color separation you're going to have. If you start pouring at a lower temperature, the colors can blend together and, and, and bleed together. And that's how you end up with like ugly browns. <laughs> so I was doing a, a test pour and the colors were these like really funky, like puke army green, like this funky blue. And it's just these weird colors that just should not have gone together. And I couldn't get the swirl just right. So I was like, okay, if I take all the colors, tump them in a bowl, do a swirl, and then pour them in the mold, it should work, right? It did the second time. The first time I, I swirled too soon, and it was, it was not good. What, what time am I at? You're about eight and a half minutes. Okay, left? No. Three and a half minutes left, okay. Tell me when I'm about 2.30 out. What is your room temperature that you usually pour in? I pour inside the house, so it's usually at about uh, low 70s. Okay. Um, I tried pouring out in the garage and in Dallas in the summer, that just didn't work. And in the winter, it was, it was crazy long. It just would not come to temp. I don't, but spray them like really good with the stoner. I, I sprayed this one earlier. Okay, um, what temp inside the house or where I'm pouring do I pour at? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring. Yep, so what I like to do is just pour and I'm just gonna kinda do a layer effect And what well, you'll see happen is you see it spreading out and you'll start to see it doing this on the sides. And then in the middle, it just, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's a technical term. And to do a lot of stuff in circles. Um, I know Ryan from Divine Island he does triangles a lot, so he'll come in from the corners. Oh, this is awesome. Do you recognize the pouring style by looking at the end product, or is it? Um, it it depends. It yeah, it, it ends up being, so Ryan and I, when we were in Music City last year, we ended up taking the same four colors and did two separate pours. And the color combination was just striking with the blocks that came out. Okay, I'm gonna give it a quick hold. Now on these, like you'll see lots of circles come up within the middle as it's coming up and over, it'll like volcano up. So see, so you can see them. And then on the bottom when they pop out, you can see like the circles too. You know, see before I swirl away? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
There you go. You think so? Yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> yeah, don't get the table, I know, right? You have a nice turquoise spot on your. Do you want me to air this? Yes, please. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's getting there quickly. So, any other questions? Or do you want me to do another one, or we good, or what, do another one? Okay. I put mine just over 60. Mm -hmm. So that way if there's like a little leak or the top's not quite on, it'll, like, it'll be right at 60. So. Um, the slow is supposed to be two hours. The fast, it can be demolded in an hour. But what I found in the hour one is it's still real tacky and gummy. It gets it, it's still sticky, so I try to leave it in there for like an hour and a half, hour forty five minutes. Okay, so for this one, anybody want to come up and choose colors? Huh? Pick someone. Okay. Let's see. Kate, come up and pick a color. Let's see. You can come pick a color, and let's see. You can come pick a color, and you can come pick a color. There you go. We'll do four colors. Okay. Any of the colors. Ooh, 14 karat. Can you pick up, show me the labels? Okay. Yeah. So you think on this one, fifty? Yeah, no, it's a, that's a good question. Um, he's asking, how do you make the decision on if you want to go flat or vertical? Um, the flats you need to cut, and they're more for like kit pens, because they end up being in smaller chunks. Um, the rods are already round, so it kind of just depends on So um, it just kind of depends on what you want. I like the verticals better just because you have more control over what's going to happen with the pattern. In the flats, you don't have as much control. You have to kind of just let it do its thing and be okay with it. You know, like you can, you can lead it in a certain direction, but the chemical process is still going once you put it in the pot. So it's going to do what it's going to do regardless. But with the, um, with the flats, they, they definitely take on a life of their own. With the verticals, is there, I use the old, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I've always used the silicone, and he's asking silicone molds versus the tubes. 
I've always used the, the silicone ones. However, the silicone, because I'm doing so many now, the silicone's wearing out really fast. And then you're getting like chunks of silicone. Like we actually had to like cut a mold open and get the rods out because it had stuck to the rod, um, which is just not fun. Um, so we did that and then we switched to the tubes which is really nice to be able to see what's happening. And you can, like, I just sharpie the outside and be like, okay, this is where I need to go with it. Um, but they also come out a whole lot better in the tubes. So if you spray a whole bunch of stoner in there, then all you have to do is like remove the plug and then take a chopstick and go thwink, and it, it they, they literally like slide out. So do you use the solid tubes? I use the clear. Okay. The first time I used the tubes, I had talked to Chad Pryor and he's like, spray it really good. And so we did, we sprayed it on like, there was like mold release everywhere. And, um, but yeah, they just took a chopstick and went boink and they came out, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got four colors, awesome. So the mica powders at lower temperatures will, it's not necessarily at the lower temperature, it's the weight of the mica. Yeah, yeah. so the 14 karat gold will sink, um, which I found out when I, with this St. Patrick's Day one that I'm doing for Heinz, the gold went, it, it, it did this like really cool shift with the black at the bottom and it was like, it just mixed itself and it had like its own little swirl going. It, it was pretty awesome. Are these online questions when you use too much mold release? I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I think in theory you could because then your rods are gonna come out and they're gonna be all like slimy. But you know, you just have to wash them with Dawn after that. I don't think they will. Mm -mm. We do on ours. Um, we've been having a lot of air bubbles lately. Mm -hmm. And so we put the, the moisture thingies on both ends of the hose. The line desiccants, I think is what it's called. The official name. the right shade and hue, yes. So he was asking about um, the amount of micas. Whites, yellows, anything light, I tend to use more. If it's a really dark mica, you don't need as much. The 14 karat, because it's heavier, I'll use less because it, it'll, like, it'll really just weight, out, weight down your your end product. Oh, I love this green. This one is eye candy, macaw blue green. Yeah, 
great question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add m macro to this as well. What are the four colors? Uh, blaze orange, 14 karat gold, the macaw blue orange, and then ruby red, which is a stunning, stunning red. It's P Town. It'll blend in the same, but you'll get the glitter. Okay. It'll just be white glitter. Just it and makes it sparkly. Like, like really? No, it it's really light flakes. And we have a question for the online. Um, uh huh. Do you have certain colors that you like to use, or like together? Purples and yellows, uh, for sure. Um, I do lots of silver with purples and silver with blues. Um, Eye Candy has a stunning silver, Jungeon silver, and it's just the right hue of silver. So anything that's metallic like that. Um, but really and truly, like I go to Pinterest and look up color palettes, and you'll have a photo, and it gives you all the different colors right there, and just try to match as best I can, or try to pull out and limit Yellow, <laughs> yellows and greens and orange. I'm more of a cool color kind of person. So a lot of mine will come with teals, blues, shades of blues, lots of purples. One of my blanks I have is called the Purple People Eater. It's five different purples all mixed in. And that one is by far like my favorite purple because it's just stunning. Um, yeah, I don't do much with yellows. I don't do much with greens, mostly because it's really hard to find the right shade of green. It's either too army green or it's too emerald, which has a lot of blue to it. Um, it it's just hard to find that right green. The reds are also hard to find, like a true red. I found one, it's called synthetic sand. That's the closest red that I've found. Oh, it's yeah. Well, I think I said twelve minutes, and you were like, "Whoop!" <laughs> and you can understir your resin, but you can't really overstir it. So I end up, while I'm waiting for it to come to town, I'll just like sit there and just stir away, you know. Or I have a 13, soon to be 14 year old at home, like, hey, come stir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, actually. The, um, the pigments, I will mix it with the mica, but if I'm looking for a flat, non-sparkly kind of color, then I just do strict pigments. So on Heinz, we just released um, a pen called, can uh, called Hearts, and it's based on the conversation hearts with the candies, and that was strictly pure divine pigments, and they were just awesome. Um, the other one I did is called Five O'Clock Somewhere. It's all pigments as well. Quite possibly when I had all the colors there and was mixing, I'm like, this is gonna be horrifying. And Jim's like, no, 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 keep going, keep going. I'm like, 
okay, this is a fool we used them. Popped them out, he turned them into a pen, we put it on Instagram, and within 10 minutes, somebody was asking, what's the name of that? And sure, I, I was talking to our business guy, I'm like, okay, cement mixer, melted popsicle, it's five o'clock somewhere, he's like, I like it. And it stuck, and now it's, it's part of our, it's, it actually jump-started our pen show after dark line. So we did a gentleman, we did a, a mojito based pen, a drink called Jekyll and Hyde. It was just, and we did champagne after dark, yeah, which was just awesome. And so that was just kind of where we went with it, you know? Um, other side, I think. It's the great big one. You know what? I'm going to try this. So I don't think I had enough in here. I know you're pouring, but what's the temperature on it? Um, I don't know. Honestly, yes, you should check them. I go by temperature, but because of the outside and stuff, it's kind of messing with the thermometer a little bit. But generally, about two minutes and 30 seconds is about when it comes to temp. And I think you And this one, I'm not going to swirl. I'm just going to let it do its thing. So you're pouring the, the gold glass because it has the possibility of shrinking. Right. And um, if you pour it in first, it'll just kind of settle on the bottom. So this way, you've got more of a chance of it doing its thing and going that way. But this one, oh, if you come look, you can see where it's kind of coming up and over. Mm -hmm. You see the edge right there of where it's playing with the edges of the mold. Nice. Yeah, for sure. Do you want to just open it there? And... Oh, okay. I don't know. Apparently. Yep. Be a surprise. All right, Elise, why don't, while I do this, why don't you tell them where they can find more info about you and... So my website is starrynightresins.com. I... Um, also, I'm on Instagram, Starry Night Resins. I'm on Facebook under Elise Maximum Long Gazelle. I haven't quite gotten the, the Facebook version of Starry Night yet. I also have a Facebook page for my lizards. It's Adventures of Emmett and Spike, which Emmett is actually a girl, we found out. So it's now Amelia and Spike. I'm sorry, Starry Night Resins. Resins. Mm -hmm. And um, some finished products, you can find some of my blanks with uh, John Tello at Hello Tello. Narwhal has two of mine, and I've got four or five in the works for them. Um, Rich Paul at River City uses some of my resins as well, and then Heinz. Hmm? Heinz, yeah. Yes. Um, any experience in mixing liquid flash through, see through color with uh, other end of mica not see through, like the results? Yes, I have. So, um, HeinzPens.com, we have a pen called the Jekyll and Hyde. And it's translucent at the bottom, and then it goes into like more of an opaque. So, it starts out blue, it goes into this like greenish, yellowish color up into green. And so you can see through on the bottom, and then it's opaque at the top. Any 
other questions for Elise? Thank you. Thank you for being a great audience. Thank you. Zach's at 3.30. Um, we'll give you plenty of time if you need to do anything. Yeah, let's open it up, get some air.